Spoke. Victory was the catch cry and fireworks were in store. But after a rampaging start, the goals dried up and so did Melbourne's playoff hopes. But in one of this country's great footballing fan bases, this is about finishing with a bang. The final round of the Hyundai A-League season for the Melbourne victory against the New Zealand Knights, live and exclusive here from Olympic Park. Plenty on offer for both sides, plenty of points to prove. And alongside me is Alan Hunter, particularly for the Melbourne victory, contracts and rewarding the fans who've shown all their faith in this side, Alan. Absolutely, Neil, they have, and the players will be out there in both camps looking to cement something for their personal contracts for next season. They haven't had the season that they would have liked. The fans have been nothing but brilliant and supportive throughout, as they always are in Melbourne for any sport. But I tell you what, today we could see an exciting end to a season for both camps. It won't be the biggest crowd of the season, but they'll make plenty of noise. It's building up nicely. It's also a farewell for Richard Kitzbickler, the talented Austrian who's going back to Salzburg as a player. Long-term coaching position there. What entertainment he's provided. And, of course, they're looking forward to a good showing to round out the season. What has been a disappointing season for the Melbourne victory. There is the sign for Kitzbickler. It has been tough on the coaching staff for Melbourne. And, of course, Ernie Merrick, he's had to battle plenty of pressure, but he admits that it has been a real long-term battle up front. We've struggled uh, fielding all our strikers uh, all year, and, uh, we, in effect, we've lost Archie for a third of all our games, but it's given other players an opportunity, and, and all our players are motivated to do well in this last game, and some of them, are, after all, are playing for their, their place next year. Well, I think, you know, both of us, I think they'll be a little bit more disappointed than us because we knew weeks ago uh, we weren't going into the four. Melbourne's a bit more recent than that, but uh, I think it's a battle of pride today um, and we'll be up for it. I think there's nothing either of us, both teams, would like is uh, to finish with three points today. Well, John had said he has had his troops up for recent battles. They have collected points, Alan Hunter, but uh, we do know in Melbourne's point of view, Ernie Merrick has been told there'll be four or five new players available. We have it on sound advice, he'll be around for the second season, and I think that's all fair in love and war. Well, it is. I mean, all the coaches have to be concerned if they haven't succeeded what they were given pre-season, and possibly Melbourne needed a top four berth, but it's difficult when you've made a lot of changes, and I think that's been part of the problem. They haven't had the experienced players when they've needed them, and today they missed two of their experienced players at the back. How will that show without plays at the back? He's certainly someone that's been instrumental. Kevin Musket, as we know, always is, but it is a balance that they have to watch, and I think they've got a good balance up front today with Allsop and Vlahos. Yes, good balance up there. The players now coming out onto Olympic Park, the ground in pretty good nick restructured looking Melbourne side of course with suspensions to Jeffrey Clays and the youngster Adrian Layer. There's Jeremy Brocky. He's been one of the shining lights for New Zealand. Nice moment there Kevin Musket with Darren Baisley. Two skippers. Kevin Musket really enjoyed his time in midfield. Might be appointed to the future for the 32 year old former Socceroo. Let's have a look now at how these sides come out. Theoklatos in goal for the victory. Carl Reckier gets a started right back with Simon Storey switching to the left. No lay in play, so Daniel Pirakoski moves in to partner the returning Mark Burns in defence. Ferrante Pantolides, Musket and Sarkis across the middle. And up front, Vlahos is back in. No Kits Bickler, of course. And Denny Alsop, as he's been all year, is in the number nine. Against the victory, the New Zealand Knights, Moss in goal. Sam Jasper, the youngster, gets his first run on start for the Knights. Tamburis, Baisley and Van Ice, who goes wide, completes the back four. Jeremy Brocky, Caravella, Tinkler and Noah Hickey pushing into midfield. And up front, the former Norwich man, Neil Emblem, starts alongside Sean Devine, forcing Chris Bright out of the starting lineup. There are the Knights' last few words of wisdom. Let's go to the bench now. Vince Lear, Ricky Diarco, Ramazan Tavsensioglu, and the reserve keeper, Eugene Galekovic, will sit alongside Ernie Merrick. For this round 21 battle. And there is Pantelides. He's had a different role with Musket in midfield. Two come together there. Let's have a quick look at John Adset's bench. Josh Maguire, Xiaobin Zhang, Chris Bright, 
And Denny Milosevic, good to see him back, the regular starting keeper who's returning from injury. Angelo Nardi, the man in charge on a sunny day in Melbourne. And the whistle sounds and the first touch goes to Kevin Musket who sends it down the ground. And the navy blue victory of course. Running from left to right. And Alan Hunter, we do expect an open game. Melbourne, of course, they can't make the playoffs, but they can put on a show here for those fans. Absolutely. I expect both sets of players to be eager to do that, particularly the home side, as you've mentioned. They've started off that way. They're getting everything forward early, and that's important to try and deliver as they started in the season in the box early. Now Carl Reckier spent time on the injured list. Many of the victory players have. It's been a problem for Merrick. Ferrante with Pantelides. Important game for Mark Burns, the man on the ball who was there about earlier in the season but just fell out of a bit of favour. Now Sarkis. Enjoying some early time on the ball. The cross came in low. Shot by Story is saved. And in the end, it's just hooked away to anywhere would do for the Knights. But Melbourne will go to the corner. And an early crack on Moss's goal. He has a beautiful start. Exactly what the doctor ordered. All started with Simon Story. The throw-in was released back. The first shot didn't happen. Simon Story got the opportunity for the rebound and struck it very, very sweetly indeed. Forced to save and a little bit of panic for that corner conceived. Off the boot of Sark, he's a decent ball in! And there it is! In just the second minute, Mark Burns has popped up at the back post and sneaked a little header in. And Melbourne have the lead. mentioned the doctor ordered it well this is the absolute delivery of delight from the boot of Sarkis you have to have numbers in the box and victory did not let their teammate down a simple finish in the end for a man that started in his central role good finish but the ball was the setup fantastic pace and the far post and well tucked in and what a start to the match for the home team great confidence booster for Mark Burns Getting his chance, of course, back with these suspensions to Lay and Clays. And Alan, there may have been a little bit of inexperience. Sam Jasper was on the back post for New Zealand, but he, he wandered away from that back stick and I guess paid the price. Yeah, and I think the actual decision to clear that ball out, a little bit of panic that forced the corner. It was the shot from Story that saw that. A little bit of a cool ahead, bit more experience, dare I say it, and maybe communication was lacking. Could have been cleared down the field rather than conceiving the corner. And that's what they'll talk about, the coach's job now. Why did we concede a cheap goal? Yes, and it's something that Melbourne hasn't had a lot of, an early goal. They've had plenty of games where they've dominated possession. Well, Melbourne have only opened the scoring in three of their last 12 matches. So that could be a positive sign if you're a statistician. New Zealand, only three for the whole season. Beautiful finish. You have to get them under the crossbar, but there was no one trying to stop Burns from doing exactly as you said, Neil, finishing it off well. And here it is again coming across. Just watch Jasper at the back. He just turned his back on it, and Burns snuck it through the hole. Yeah, good finish, and that's ball watching for the youngsters out there. You've got to track your man. You can't watch the flight of the ball or you'll get punished. So some more work to do for the Knights. It's whipped in by Carl Reckier. Good 
intent by the Melbourne victory. Pantelides. Cross for Ferrante. A little first time not on was looking for Vlahos, but Baisley should take care of it. Pirikoski inside now for Musket. Here is the skipper again. This time Musket goes long, looking for the diagonal run of Denny Alsop. Kiwis just can't get into the match at the moment. Melbourne, Allen with their name on the ball at the moment. Yeah, well, the Kiwis are starting to just relax a little as far as letting Melbourne have that ball in their defensive four. Trying to play counter-attack football, no doubt. They can't let them settle too much on the ball, particularly with the start that they've had. Vlahos, for me, is very important. If his fitness is up to scratch, he's played a lot of football together in the old Carlton NSL with... Daniel Alsop and they work quite comfortably together for those reasons. Now Reckia tried to pick up the runner for Ante. And it was Baisley across there now. A little bit of miscontrol from Pirikoski. It's a relieved Ernie Merrick to see an early goal go in. Did you see a smile there from Ernie Merrick? <laughs> Should we give him a smile? We might give him the benefit. Carl Reckia takes it off Emblem, so a nice tidy start from the two Melbourne fullbacks, Story and Reckia. It's his favourite side, Simon Story, a natural left footer. Likes to come forward when he can and play it quite simple. Now Pantelides. Sarkis. He's got Jeremy Brocky for company. First time in by Sarkis. Away by Van Eyes. Lajos, Pantelides, very comfortable on the ball, Reckia now looks for the run of Ferrante. The flag was up. But I guess it's one of the most haunting statistics, Alan, in the inaugural A-League season. Melbourne, 15 points from the first eight rounds, but they've collected just eight more from 36 available after it seems a long time ago that 5-0 win or thumping over Sydney and somewhere along the line the goals dried up and so did the points yeah it's been similar for the Queensland side as far as that's concerned there's been a big turnaround when you can win a game so convincingly you've got to wonder why can't you do it more often and at times it's been the lack of finishing from Melbourne victory that's seen them not score as many the player slipped over here's Vlahos! An acrobatic stuff from Glenn Moss. But they are really knocking on the New Zealand goal. Very good strike from Vlahos. His first touch is good. It gives him time for his second to be on target. And Glenn Moss had to make a good save, just not tight enough. In the defensive duties there again, Tamburis for New Zealand. They need to be tighter in those areas or they'll get punished. They already have. Now a chance for the Knights to come forward. Sean Devine, physical player. Loses control. Frustrating season, Devine. So the first three shots of the match going to the victory. One of them has ended up to have this early lead through the back post header of Mark Burns. Now Musket. Little ball in for Vlahos. Again Musket over the top looking for Allsop. Can he cut back? He was looking to get back on his right foot. And good work in the end by John Tamburis. The 
they're anchored in their own half, the Knights. And they get a little bit of relief here. The whistle from Angelo Nardi. They just need to keep three and four passes. Try and keep possession at the moment. New Zealand finding it difficult. Melbourne very, very keen to get first to the ball. Now Tinkler. Sean Devine had just checked his run. Johnny Edshead, who's kept the faith with his New Zealand troops. Of course, he's had his own personal battles with illness. A long, tough season across the ditch. But here's Caravella, one of their shining lights. Getting forward. Now Hickey. Tinkler. Game was looking for Devine, but Virakoski stood up to him nicely. Now Baisley, Caravella. Shut down by Rekia. It's all tight, but Devine finds a bit of space. Caravella. Hey, cool. Now the looping throw-in was looking for Neil Emblem. Van Eyes, Emblem. The boot came through from behind from Carl Reckier. And that's an important factor for New Zealand. When Neil Emblem gets in that position, he's got to maintain possession. He's got to hold the ball up and do one of two things. Either keep possession and bring in the midfield players supporting him or get the foul. And on that occasion, he's got the foul and it gives New Zealand the opportunity to cause some danger from a set piece. The fouls are all level at three as Baisley puts in a deepish looking ball, too deep, into the breadbasket of Michael Theoklatos. Now Musket. Pantolides. Baisley slid in at the feet of Rekia. Fell nicely for Tinkler. Nardi got a boot on it. It might again fall the Kiwis' way. It's a very busy victory midfield. Here's Ferrante. Might be short for Rekia. Now Burns, cross now for Story. They can come down the left-hand side, Melbourne. Musket. Bring it back where it came from. Here's Rekia. Gets it back from Ferrante and found a little bit of room, Carl Rekia. Tries to measure the ball in. And the touch came from Frank Van Ice, and just as well because they were queuing up behind him. Yeah, a little bit of misunderstanding on the left flank there from New Zealand. The overlap coming through. Carl Rackier in great position, causing problems, almost an own goal in the end. Frank Van Ice not happy with the lack of communication, I'd suggest. Christian Sarkis swings it in. They climb. There were plenty of heads up there. And the ball's still in play. Flat ball across again from Sarkis. And some wake-up calls for the Kiwis' defence. Now Rekia. Sarkis had taken off. Now a chance for Noah Hickey to show some pace. He's tangling with Rekia. And he got the free kick from Angelo Nardi. Go, 
Yeah, it'll be an interesting battle down this flank. You've got the experience of Noah Hickey up against Reckier at times. And certainly Ferrante, most of the, the game, they seem at this stage, Melbourne, to be happy to try and force the right-hand side against Hickey. Again in by Baisley. Again, it's deep, and out comes the Theophilus. So just not giving his men in the box, Alan, that little bit of room to get good contact. Yeah, good pace on it, but as you said, both deliveries from that side have been a little too deep. And now, here goes Sean Devine putting the foot down. The Theophilus will have to show a little bit of fancy stuff. Before he sends it down the park. Back comes from Baisley. Up goes Emblen. Brocky's put the foot down, but Pirakoski will clean up. Caravella. It comes from Musket, a looping header back for Theophilus. Sarkis. Ferrante will have to double back. He slips over and allows Noah Hickey to take control. Down the line for Devine. Just lost his footing. Hickey made the run inside, but Devine claiming he got a little bit of an illegal shove. Again, it's with Melbourne. The sloppy stuff in the middle third here. Baisley. Down towards Devine. And that's important today from New Zealand. Their delivery to the front two has to be almost perfect. Neil Emblen certainly not there for his mobility and his pace. He's there as a target man, and they've got to find him with those sorts of deliveries. Well, they'll turn over possession too easily as they have now. There's a poor ball out. Yes, he is the real old-fashioned target, Neil Emblen, up front. Look for Devine to try and make a few runs down the channels. So far, it's been pretty easy pickings for the Melbourne defence. That ball short from Caravella. And Van Eyes is happy to hoof it over the sideline and give his teammate a bit of a stare. Now Hickey missed his kick. Like a thief in the night, Musket came along. Ferrante. Gets it back from Pantelides. Was he caught by Brocky? He was. Looks to play on quickly. Across the story. Now Vlahos. Selectively across now to Musket. Switching sides a lot, Melbourne. In for Ferrante. Rolls the ball in. Vlahos had sneaked in, but this time the Knights come up with it. Divine. Ferrante. Sloppy passing. New Zealand try and drag it out of their own half. Here goes Big Emblem. Again, it comes to nothing. Now Reckia goes inland looking for Allsop. There's the blast. And why not from Andy Vlahos? Yeah, good understanding from Vlahos and Allsop. As I mentioned earlier, they played together a lot. Many games, many games indeed. And that'll be very difficult for New Zealand if they don't win the first ball. Vlahos or Allsop will be looking there to pick up the second one. Here goes Allsop, battling away with Tim Boris. Danny Allsop, he went to ground. And he's gone to the spot. 
Angelo Nardi. Well, this will make for some debate. And a yellow card to boot, so it's all blown up here for the Knights inside their own box. Yeah, at first glance, I've got to say, a little bit harsh. Looked like half a dozen of one, half a dozen from the other. Tamburis being a judge there with the yellow card to have given a foul. They're both big men. They like to use their bodies and their arms at times. Whether it's inside the box is probably the controversial part. The first foul is definitely outside the box. So even if it is a foul, certainly a very harsh decision, but a welcome one for Kevin Musket. He loves the opportunity to do what he doesn't do as many, as many times, and that's score goals. So here goes Musket for number two. He does it nicely, Musket, and Melbourne have a second. The Union celebrates. Glenn Moss will have to pick it out and go back and start again, but to say it was harsh, Alan Hunter, you're probably being a little bit kind. I thought that was a very, very poor decision. It was indeed. There wasn't a lot of deliberation from his assistant, which is the big question, but lovely finish. He's finished bigger and more important penalties, I should say, than that one. Moss went early. Musket just waited for him to do that, and that's the second time he's been beaten already. We've got to say he can't be responsible for either. Lovely finish from Kevin Musket. I spoke to him briefly before the game, and he was keen to get on the scoreboard, and he has. Sixth goal of the season for Kevin Musket. And scored since round 14. He's got a few from the spot, but he won't mind that. Here goes Allsop away again. Good ball in. Have they got the third? Well, not quite. Andy Vlahos didn't get hold of it. Uh, it's almost Batman and Robin, the understanding from Vlahos there. Kevin Musket with the thumbs up. He created that opportunity down the right-hand side. Five penalties. I can't remember the last time he missed one. Scored an important one for Australia against Uruguay in the non-qualification. The crowd love him here. He's been an important fixture. When he's out there, he leads by example. It could be three. Vlahos, a good opportunity there, Neil. Yes. That is some ratio, isn't it? Penalties to goals. Musket. Six for the season. And has made the spot his own. And a player down now for the New Zealand Knights. Just a bit of a smack in the face there, I think, for, for Noah Hickey. Lajos just trying to use his body. Tamburis, it was indeed. Certainly as much a foul on that occasion as the penalty. It can deflate you when you're already 1-0 down so early as a team. You're obviously not playing with the, the utmost confidence. The position on the table says a lot there, but the second one they'll know as professionals is very harsh. You must feel for Glenn Moss in goals. Yes, it's a long way back now for the Knights. And it's a season certainly John Edshead won't forget. Not a lot to smile about, but he's resilient. If he's anything, Alan Hunter, he's, his attitude, I think, has rubbed off. He's got his own battles. We've mentioned that, but it's, it's rubbed off on a lot of his players. Even players when well, the exit door was on midway through the season, but he's, he's kept his mettle. Been a thorough professional in that category as well. Many others. Take your hat off to him for that. Under extreme pressure, personally, and also in his role first season a lot of people have said that they haven't had the opportunity and maybe shouldn't be there but it's a it's a building process and some have done very well Caravella for me on the ball now has been instrumental he's been consistent yes yeah, Zen and Caravella leaves only on a, a one season deal with the Knights I'll be keen to lock him down for the future he goes Melbourne again, although that pass will find only Noah Hickey. Away goes Sean Devine. Can he keep it in? He can. 
but in keeping it in, he gave it up to Rekia. There he goes down the flank. Vlahos can turn, but Baisley takes over. Now Hickey. Tinkler. Very compressed in the middle of the park, New Zealand. Hickey. Van Eyes. Now the ball into the feet of Devine. Van Eyes. So enjoying a bit of time on the ball, the Kiwis, although they're not going far. Now they go the other side. Across the Tamburis. And that's the problem they've they've had for the first part of this match. In the 27th minute, they really have had no option but to try and play it over the top. The midfield's been very well marshaled from Melbourne. Now Simon Storey. Run by Vlahos has been very busy in the last 10 minutes. Ball in was looking for Allsop too deep. Hooked away by Hickey. Well, the victory, they're picking up all the loose balls, Alan. They're just running it at their pace. And, and somehow New Zealand are going to have to find some decent running off the ball to try and create something. Yeah, definitely. It's the midfield option. You wouldn't like to be playing in the midfield for New Zealand at the moment because a lot of balls are going over the top. The back four are getting pressured well from Vlahos and Allsop, forcing them to play the long ball too often. And there's the problem. If they don't hold the ball up front, whether it's Emlyn or Devine, they struggle to maintain possession and Melbourne have the numbers. Six shots in the match, all to the victory. Now that ball cut out by Caravella, but even he, it's a heavy touch, gives it straight back. Now Musket tries to pick up the runner for Rante. He's wedged in the corner for Rante. He looks back. Battling away with Noah Hickey. He's not the easiest bloke to get around. He gives you 100% every week, Noah Hickey. Credit to him. Michael Ferrante certainly had some good experience overseas. Whether he's more suited out wide, I'm not quite sure. Here is Ferrante. On his first goal last week at the coast. And Sarkis can't drag it back. Talking to Michael Ferrante before the game, it was the frustration of just not being able to get goals from midfield. He had some good passages through the season, but like a lot of his teammates, the goals haven't gone in, and particularly from midfield, where other sides, Alan, in the A-League have really cashed in in that department. Yeah, absolutely. They relied a lot as well on Archie Thompson. And there's been controversy surrounding Archie Thompson for too long, I believe. That's disrupted things. And they've changed their system. Some would say too often during the season. They haven't been as settled as other sides. Now the run by Pantelides who will get there first. He just tried to dink it back in towards Lajos, who was inside. Ambitious effort by Pantelides, but Melbourne well and truly camping in Knights territory. Sarkis has been another one. He's got so much potential. Knocks a lovely set piece, whether it's a corner or a free kick. Plenty of pace on the ball. Obviously, he spends a lot of time at training, practicing as you need to. As we just saw, three corners to the victory. Approaching the 30th minute, the crowd comes up. In by Sark, he's a little short. Not quite the deadly accuracy we're used to Christian Sarkis. 
But that's the problem for defenders. When you put a lot of pace on the delivery, as Sarkis has done, you give the defender sometimes no option but to clear it for another corner or maybe even put it in his own net. Again, it's a little short away by Brocky. Ferrante. Reckia. Aimless ball there from Carl Reckia, but New Zealand give it straight back. Ferrante switches it. Again, the runner wasn't there. Van Ice now. New Zealand try and take stock. Here's Cole Tinkler. And Jasper, the youngster. The flashy red boots. And the foul by Story. Yeah, that's more positive for New Zealand. Trying to get someone forward, a good overlapping run from Jasper and created an opportunity and they need a good delivery here. Get some confidence. So Sam Jasper, the outside of the boot, he hits it, drills it across. But not quite the effect that we've seen from the likes of Ross Aloisi using that technique. <laughs> confidence is bliss. Good support, though, from Neil Emlin in the background there. His coach will know that, John had said. Just applauding the opportunity from the youngster to try and deliver a good ball. Didn't quite get there. But the fact that they created a, a half chance is going to give them something to think about. They want to at least maintain the scoreline before the break. Don't let Melbourne run away with this. Now break here. Young Sam Jasper will be 20 years of age on Monday. It's a long way off an early birthday present here as the Knights are chasing a two-goal deficit. Ahead of Mark Burns and the penalty from Kevin Musket. His sixth of the season, five from the spot, would you believe? Here's Caravella. Short ball for Emlyn. Laid it off straight to Musket, who can give it off now to Ferrante. He does it nicely inside Van Nuys. Ferrante away. The diagonal run from Vlahos couldn't slip it in behind. On the top! Well, you talk about Musket. Wouldn't that be ironic if he could pop up and score it? <laughs> another one or two and put some pressure on the leading goal scorer charts. At one stage, I think he was sitting second. Yes, you'd think you'd hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. Here's that challenge. Saki's on Caravella. You feel Caravella as a player has to get more and more in the game here if the Knights are going to create anything. Now that's a lovely switch ball there over the top. Noah Hickey applauds it, and he should. And they're the key times in the games when you need players to create something special. And Noah Hickey to return and applaud that will encourage his teammates. A corner, and sometimes you can create a goal out of these situations. So Sam Jasper for the Knights. 34th minute, he swings it in, it goes deep again, but across there is Baisley, who did his utmost to try and steer it back. Again, the delivery is letting the Knights down. On by Vlahos. Ferrante. All the second and third balls going the victory's way. Sarkis. Pantelides. Got a shove from Brocky, who's had a difficult start to this match. Jeremy Brocky starved the possession. They play on quickly 
which wasn't a bad call. Vlahos made the run and Baisley could only put it over the byline. So again, Christian Sarkis. Right into the mixer. Ferrante switches to his left. Now he tries the effort. But within a whisker, the victory of grabbing a third. Yeah, once again, fantastic delivery from Sarkis. A brilliant head has just rattled the crossbar. Ferrante with half an opportunity there. He knows it. He'll feel disappointed about the follow-up. But look at the delivery and look at the header. Absolutely crashed that one. I think it was Carl Reckia. <laughs> Beautiful ball and a great header indeed from Reckia. Once again, the set piece causing problems for the defence of, of New Zealand. And that's been the difference in important situations. Goalkeepers, no chance there. Not tight enough marking and well cleared off the line in the end from New Zealand. 3 0 would have been a disaster. It was the head of Rekia and the knee of Mark Burns following up, but it didn't go in, and the Knights hanging by a thread. Hooked on by Tinkler. Back it comes. Van Ice put his head down. Now Emblem. Short for Hickey, who doubles back. Good start by Ferrante. Now the foul came in from Carl Reckia. Now Vlahos hooks it back in. Here's a chance at oh, Christian Sarkis. The little shimmy got into space. He can see the funny side, but his eyes lit up, Alan, and so did the ball. Absolutely. Well, he's only smiling because of the scoreboard, you'd suggest. A golden opportunity at nil all. He may not smile. Should have at least got that one on target. You wonder how you can miss by so much. But put that one down to Neil Emblem's mistake. Silly free kick ricocheted off the back of a Melbourne victory player. And Neil Emblem should be playing a much more forward role rather than taking those free kicks himself. Get in, get in. Now Ferrante. Caravella comes back. Great shot, Ferrante. Well, he hooked it wide in the end. But under pressure, he fired off the shot. It's been a little story of Melbourne Victory's year. They've dominated in periods and not scored the goals. They have two at the moment. To be, to be fair, it could be four. They've rattled the crossbar and they've had many opportunities to get in behind. Ferrante not creating a save from Glenn Moss. Back by Jasper, up goes Brocky. Reckier. Showing that he's well and truly recovered from injury. He finds Vlahos. Now Musket. Shut down by Caravella. Off for Hickey. In the middle, mate. Divine. Well, a little hopeful ball there was cut out by Pirikoski, but he gets it back. Former Exeter City striker, Sean Devine. He's battled away up front for the Knights. Now in by Van Eyes towards Jasper. He got his head to the ball. Not sure if the sun was in his eyes, but it came to nothing. Away goes Melbourne. Off for Vlahos. A good physical challenge from John Tamburis. Well, I wonder if Ernie Merrick's thinking as I am that that was more of a foul from the penalty from John Tamburis. It's certainly good delivery, as you said, Neil. The sun may have been in the eyes, and New Zealand need to get that delivery picked up. A 
final ball is just not what they need. Melbourne Victory are much better in that department at this stage of the match. Yes, they are running the show, the home side. They'll go to the corner again. Andy Vlahos just back from injury. No Kitz Bickler in this one. The former Austria Vienna player is heading back home, of course, to further his career with Salzburg. Tomorrow he flies out. He is here at the ground, of course, so looking to send him off. So it comes in from Sarkis near post. Ben Ice was there. Now Musket. Ferrante. Come back the other way now. Ferrante. Ball was aimed towards Recchi, but Emblen cut it out and tried to get a second header on it. And a little hand there against Ferrante. So a chance again for the Knights to come forward. Yeah, and that's much better from Neil Emblen there. Leading by example, good pressure, forced to turn over in the free kick. We need the delivery to match. Baisley. Well, it's easy pickings again for Melbourne. Here comes Sarkis. Allsop takes over. And got that all wrong. Just needs to be careful, John Tambura. Some of those late challenges sitting on a yellow card. Now Noah Hickey. Might be able to run it. Recker, he tries to get round the back. Hickey, not a bad effort, but again, way too much on the ball in. Yeah, well, John Edsett will be aware of that, and you made a good point. It's important that they can try and get some good balls in because of the sun factor. Anything in behind the defenders at this stage in this half is extremely div difficult to see, let alone judge. They haven't really tested the goalkeeper. Michael Theoclitus will be quite happy to go in at half time, not having really had a testing save to make. That's been a pretty easy half for Theoclitus, and he may be grateful for that. He had a tough one out the Central Coast last round. Pretty solid form, but wasn't one of his better games. But small amount of work in the first half here at Olympic Park. Melbourne have it by two over the Knights. Here's Sarkis. Now Van Eyes. And that is a very ordinary ball. Some of the passing from New Zealand has been average to be kind. Still almost a two-to-one ratio with the ball, Melbourne. It's been that way really from the start of the match as Ferrante picks this one up. Cross comes Baisley. Pirakoski. Touch on from Pantelides. Be happy, Alan, just to stagger into the break. Just two down, New Zealand. Yeah, definitely, Neil. Look, the options for, for the back four of New Zealand have been long, long, or long. Too often they haven't been able to play through midfield. Now you see Neil Emblen playing a little deeper. Crashed into musket there and came off slightly the better. Here's Jasper. Now Tamburis. Ball played long. Brocky made the run, but a lot of kick and hope in the New Zealand play. Emblem. Emblen again. Brocky. Emblen's continued the run. 
Too much on the ball. Yeah, unfortunately, more of the same. That final pass from New Zealand just letting them down, whether it's short or long. They need to make sure, I'm sure John Adset will mention it at the break. They need to make sure that they keep One possession keep in the attacking minute. areas in particular, that final third. Just one minute of added time here at Olympic Park. Round 21 in the Hyundai A-League. Melbourne leading the Knights by two. Going to ground was Allsop. They've had a ding-dong battle with Tamburis. Probably fairly even as far as the knocks and bumps go. Here's Van Ice. Now Hickey finds Devine. Turns into trouble. Well, they've shut down the New Zealand players pretty quickly in this first half, Melbourne. Yeah, definitely. They've looked hungry, haven't they, Neil? They've looked first to the ball on most occasions. And the scoreboard is probably a little bit generous to the visiting side at this stage. The final chance put in by Van Eyes. Skimmed across the top of Emlyn. Melbourne again come away. The long ball early. Vlahos. And they've run out of time, but they'll troop off the victory side with a very tidy break. Kevin Musket went to the penalty spot, got his sixth of the season after Mark Burns had put the Melbourne victory in front. A traditional little touching of the grass from Musket. New Zealand have it all to do. Half-time in Olympic Park, the Melbourne victory two, the Knights nil. been one-way traffic here at Olympic Park and it's all been Melbourne but New Zealand will be bitterly disappointed with this decision by Angelo Nardi. Contact looked outside the box but they went to the spot and it gave Melbourne a second goal and a yellow card for John Tamburis. The stats from the first half possession will the Knights have dragged it back a little bit but Melbourne 60-40 time in the opposition half always with the victory five corners to two for the home side just once both sides caught offside. 17 fouls in the match. And as we've just seen, John Tamburis is in the book of referee Angelo Nardi. That's the way the numbers stack up from the first half. Let's have a look now at all the highlights. And Alan Hunter, Melbourne came out of the blocks flying. They got forward on both sides. An early strike by Simon Storey. Yeah, it was. It was the story from Simon, if you like. It was a good start from his teammates. Came off nicely and he struck that half volley ever so well, forced the shot and a bit of panic that created the real opportunity for the home team very early and that's what every coach loves. To see the opportunity created, to see it technically correct on target and then the second opportunity comes in and that's the goal. Third minute and a great finish from a player that hasn't been there as often as he'd like this season, Mark Burns. Yeah, they were just stunned early, weren't they, New Zealand? They were under the pressure, never really marked up, and Burns sneaks in at the back. And that's the key word, mark up, and they were ball-watching on that occasion. Delivery's always going to be strong, they should know that. That young man, Christian Sarkis, always puts plenty of venom on it, and it created the opportunity in the goal. And Melbourne got the confidence they were always looking for in front of goal, the strike here from Vlahos. Lovely strike, a little bit overdramatic in the save, but he did what he had to do, Glenn Moss, and once again, not tight enough. Not marking up tight enough there, Tamburis on Vlahos giving him the opportunity of one and two touches. We saw Tamburis getting off the ground there. Well, I'll tell you what, he was back on the ground here. Now, Alan Hunter, how'd you see this? Yeah, a very bad decision. The referee will have to admit that when he sees the replay and learns from it, as everyone should. No way in the world it's inside the box, and it's half a dozen of one, six of the other when it comes to wrestling with your opponent. He Just went into the book, uh, sorry, Alan, and John Tamburis, but Kevin Musket, you couldn't keep him away from the spot. <laughs> Mr. Reliable. He loves scoring goals, as most defenders do. It's not as often as you'd like, but six now. And they went in for the kill. Carl Reckier out-jumped everyone. Beautiful ball again, and it's about the delivery. New Zealand haven't been able to match it in that department so far, and only the paintwork and the metalwork make it 2-0, not 3. Lovely header. Cannons off and the knee and cleared off the line in the end by Sam Jasper. It was Sam Jasper. Melbourne kept coming and here's a chance for Ferrante in the 39th. 
not on target. Ferrante's had more than the one opportunity to get something on target. Caravella as ever. Always diligent, probably creating that going wide. Look at those attack stats. Total shots, 10 Melbourne, just one for the Knights. Balls into the box, almost a two to one ratio. Well, the shots are overwhelming, six to zero. And uh, the Knights, Glenn Moss, called on to make two saves. Nothing for Michael Theokratos. So it all stacks up Melbourne's way. They have the two goals, Mark Burns and Kevin Musket. And uh, the home fans pretty happy here at Olympic Park. Well, I've got to ask, Neil, is Ernie Merrick happy? A lot of the fans will say, is he happy with 2-0? Because I've got to say, a lot of people and a lot of fans and coaches will say no. It should be 3 or 4-0. Richard Kitzbickler, his last opportunity. He'll be going back to Austria tomorrow to enjoy his family life and a new life. But the fans have got to say, well, I think it should be 4 or 5 because if New Zealand can get one back in now, yes. they'll really set the cat amongst the pigeons for the home team. There could be a few nerves, but uh, Melbourne in front. They have it by two here at Olympic Park. It's round 21. We'll take a break and come back for the second half after these messages. All the shutting down has come from the Melbourne victory. Rekia charged in on Zen and Caravella. We saw plenty of that in the first half. And all the New Zealand efforts led to nothing. It is the Melbourne victory who hold a two goal to nil lead here at Olympic Park. Plenty more coming up in round 21. Straight after this, we go to Suncorp Stadium. Queensland Raw at home to the Central Coast Mariners. The Mariners shooting for third spot, of course. That's live 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox Sports 1 straight after this match. And then, of course, we cap the final round before the playoffs at Energy Australia Stadium. The Jets in that battle for third with Central Coast. They're at home to the Perth Glory. Live Sunday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Take note, that one on Fox Sports 2. Looking forward to a interesting second half. A good crowd here, not just to see Melbourne off with a win, perhaps, but also to farewell the flying Austrian Richard Kitzbickler, who is now with Alan Hunter. Richard, obviously a fantastic start. You probably would love to be out there after being 1-0 up early and then Kevin Musket looking like getting on the goal-scoring charts again. Yeah, that's true. So he's his second goal-scorer now on the team and I can't do anything about it, but I'm happy for the team. It's what we needed, what we would have needed in the other home games too, an early goal so everybody gets his confidence and can play what he is capable of. But now it looks very good and it should be a victory for the end of the season. How have you enjoyed and how have you seen the A-League in its first season as a professional from overseas? I think it was fantastic, all the supporters here, you can see it's the last game, already full house again and I think it was really fantastic and it's a big, a big future for soccer in Australia. What have you been your memories of Melbourne victory and certainly your time here? Ah, I think about the, the first home goal I scored against Spurs and the game against Sydney of course and from a private life I got married here in Melbourne so I'll never forget this city. Fantastic. I love the way you've played football. We've enjoyed your time here and all the best in your travels. Oh, thank you very much. I really enjoyed it here. I'd like to thank all the fans and all my teammates and also the board of the club and I wish them all the best. Thank you, Richard. OK, no worries. Thank you. Very likeable fellow, Richard Kitzbickler, 31-year-old going back, of course, to Salzburg where he will continue playing and has a long-term deal there to take in coaching. And his style of play will be missed, certainly around the A-League. I did have a long chat and spent a bit of time with Kit Spickler after his marriage, and he did say he would genuinely miss Melbourne and what the A-League was offering, but certainly a long-term lifestyle commitment to return to Austria. And he'll be pretty happy that the teammates have come out and put two past New Zealand. Could have been more. And a chance it looks now for... Merrick to give one or two a run off the bench. Ricky Diaco makes his way onto Olympic Park and Andy Vlahos comes off. Vlahos, who, of course, back from a niggling injury, so there may be another little problem there for Vlahos. One of the young strikers here in Melbourne, Diaco gets his chance. So New Zealand to get us underway in this second half. <laughs> Just like the first, an early touch for Musket, who'll look up and try to get things going.
Certainly Melbourne, if they can get a win up here and certainly bang in one or two more goals, they can join Perth on 26 and perhaps jump over the top of the glory if they falter at Newcastle on Sunday. Diaco. Ball back was looking for Ferrante. A little bit of a scorpion clearance there in the New Zealand box. Here it is again, Noah Hickey. Just a one-footed version, but it did the job for New Zealand as they try and stay in this contest. Ball drops for Ferrante, spears it low. Allsop was just off balance, he gave it up. Now Caravella, who really struggled to get into that first half. This is falls for Diaco, who can gallop into a bit of space. Across for Allsop. Diaco just lost his footing as he was trying to make the return run. Emblem. Story got the header back in the last line. Now Reckia. Diaco, a little nod on. Allsop again was on his heels. Tough for a striker, Allen is up there when you a lot of long balls are being played and you really don't have too many players around you. Here goes Ferrante, who spotted the keeper off his line. <laughs> Very cheeky. Also tough as a defender if you're a New Zealand player and you've had to contend with two fresh ones for the first half and now you've got Diaco, a fresh player, coming in. You're 2-0 down and he'll be out there to impress as everyone should be with contracts up for grabs very soon. Yes, plenty of talk that Adrian Caceres from the glory is over the line as far as being a victory target for the second season. Talk of Denny Tiato considering returning from the UK. He's now with Leicester City. So it will be competitive for Melbourne spots in the second season, but they're dealing with an attack here by the Knights. Pirikoski comes away, gives it to Ferrante. Muskets ball straight to Jasper. Now one for Devine to chase. Sean Devine back on his left, little looping ball in, but out comes Theokotos. Pantelides. And Van Ice into the back of Ferrante, but play goes on. Burns. Emblen crashing in was Pantelides who took it off him. Pantelides rolls it in for Diaco. And just a little bit too much on it. Yeah, and just the timing of the run there from Diaco as well. Didn't get his feet going early enough, but a fantastic tackle and a steal, if you like. Sliding one it is from Pantelides off the bigger player and slower, dare I say, player. Beautiful tackle, copy book, wins the ball, gets up and then immediately has the vision to see the options. He's got Allsop on his left and he takes the opportunity for the fresh player, Diarco, who didn't quite start his run early enough. Here is Allsop, but Tamburis takes care of it. Now Devine. Sizing up his options, Devine, but he's dwelt on it for too long. And back comes Pantelides. Ferrante. Zips across the park. Gets around the big man emblem. Off for Story. Diaco. 
Pantelides. Now Sarkis. Musket has picked up the run of Story. First time ball in. Van Eyes puts it only over his own byline, so more pressure coming for the Knights. Lovely football, though, in the build up there from Melbourne Victory. Delightful one and two touches, keeping possession. And once again, the sun probably coming into play as those balls are looped behind defenders. No option but to give away a cheap, some would say, corner. Onto the magic boots of Sarkis. Christian Sarkis right into the mixer. They climb. Reckia was there again. And Mark Burns was up there. He got the final touch. Tough day out for Glenn Moss, who's done a fairly sterling job since the injury to Denny Milosevic. On by Brock. He didn't get any distance. Musket sends it back the right way, but Angelo Nardi's found a free kick here for New Zealand. Yeah, that's a good point you make about Glenn Moss. You know when you're coming into that opportunity, if someone gets injured, and all of a sudden you're the goalkeeper that has to make the most saves in the competition. And he can't be blamed for the two goals to date today. Well, it's not a rainmaker from Baisley. Maybe he missed his kick, but put it up there and gave no one a chance. Yeah, it's another indication of the quality of that final pass, whether it's from a set piece situation, free kick, throw in, corner, needs to pick up. I have no doubt in my mind that the experience John Edsett would have talked about it at half time. But he can't play the ball for them. There's Pantolini, too quick for Emblem. He caught one then from Sam Jasper. We'll get a talking to from Angelo Nardi. There's been talk, Alan, about does Melbourne have enough mongrels? They play on quickly. They'll have to come back. Well, Melbourne won't be happy. That was a beautiful early ball that caught New Zealand unaware. The referee, unfortunately, had his back to play. We saw plenty of that from Kevin Musket against the Central Coast. A quick thinking ball from the free kick. Now more conventional, in by Burns. Into the sun, you can see Allsop shielding the eyes. Now Tinkler, Diarco's there. Sarkis tried to get in and Diarco gave up the free kick. So that sun is still a factor. Yeah, perfect example of the problem that the sun causes. Melbourne smart enough at this stage to try and take advantage of it. New Zealand didn't in the first half. Now Burns, quickest to recover, but only as far as Emblem. Backheel was cheeky from Sarkis, did the job. Cut out now by Tinkler, picked up by Caravella. Now Emblem. Jasper. Foot in by Story. And away comes Melbourne through the middle for Ante. Got all his teammates on one side of the ground. He was looking for Allsop. So the pace picks up. Baisley off for Brocky. He's hardly been in the game, the youngster. Space for Emblem. He'll switch it. And a poor ball. He was looking for Noah Hickey. Gave him no chance. And away goes Reckia. Carl Reckia. Sizes up to Van Ice. Allsop had pretty much run offside. So again, it breaks down as Melbourne search for a third goal to, you would think, put New Zealand out of their misery. Mark Burns had a stint earlier in the season, a brief one, albeit captaining the side. But Alan, Kevin Musket in midfield, I mean, is that his future? Do you think maybe looking ahead at the second season he will play in front of a back three or four? Look, I think Kevin's quite happy to lead from any position on the park. I, th I think if necessary, you, you know, you play him where he's 
going to be most influential to the team. Here's Emblen for New Zealand. And a foul on Sam Jasper. No doubt it was a foul on the youngster. His first start, he'll know all about the professional league now. Little one, two, came off quite well, but you can just see Piakoski has just not let him move. Referee on the spot, and a, probably the best opportunity from this position for the Knights to get something on target and possibly get back into the match. There it was, the shoulder from Daniel Piakoski. He's been one of the finds for me of the season. Really starting to develop as a marker and plays it simple. Fairly good possession coming out of the back. Important player from one of the younger brigade of Melbourne Victory squad. Yes, for sure. He and Adrian Leyer, two defensive lights for the future for the Melbourne Victory. Now, Emblen's there, Brocky's there. Emblen, it's Brocky. It just dinks it forward. Can't quite work out what New Zealand were all about there, but it's broken down as quickly as it started. Well, rather than look for a cheap free kick, they really need to be getting something on target. And too many touches for the free kick specialists at home. Too many touches from New Zealand in that position to give Melbourne the opportunity to shut that ball down, as they did very well. You need to get a quick touch. And your second one, at least, has to be on target. Yes. Now Devine. Trying to turn his man, but he held possession. Van Nuys sends it long. Certainly sense at half-time in the crowd that they're looking and feel that they could have had three or four goals before the break. They might get one here. Ferrante has made the run. He's put it through for Christian Sarkis. Surely. Allsop couldn't get there. Well, a flashback of sorts, Alan Hunter, too. Melbourne's problems. A lovely ball through, wasn't it, Christian Sarkis? Moss spread himself well and just did enough with the feet to keep that one out for 3-0. Just didn't fall well enough for Daniel Alsop. Hasn't that been a story too often of his season in the Hyundai A-League? Lovely ball and a good opportunity for Sarkis as he approaches another corner. Sarkis back for Frante, won't get there. Caravella can break. Brocky sped off down the left, but he comes right looking for Devine. Might not have been the best option. It was cut out by Story. Yeah, interesting time of the match now. Do Melbourne force things forward and try and really go for goals? Or do they maintain some consistency and be happy with the 2-0 result? The fans would love the first one to happen because it'll give the New Zealand Knights the opportunity to play attacking football and the game will really open up. Just saw Ernie Merrick on his feet there, barking out a few orders. Perhaps getting Melbourne to lift the tempo. Now Devine going on a run. He jinks back inside, tried to create room for the shot. Never really on, but they get a second bite. Here's Sam Jasper. Took a little deflection and a nice one for Theoklatos. Pantelides. Also. Goes back inland. Goes on a nice run also. Rolls it in. Sarkis has beaten the offside again. Sarkis. And again, the left boot of Glenn Moss in the road. Now from the other side. In by Ferrante. First Diaco, then also. Oh, they're certainly going for it now, the home team. Opportunities just coming by the minute. Ferrante again with the right boot. All about the pace of the delivery, and it was almost perfect. Daniel Alsop almost gets a touch. Carbon copy of his teammate, Diaco. 
And the earlier chance was two out of two from Glenn Moss's left boot. Game starting to open up and the fans are enjoying it. Yes, well, the Union might feel they're owed a couple. But two in the first half. They want more for Melbourne to finish this season with a good result. Yeah, well, the call was six from the diehard fans that were discussing things at halftime, Neil. They want to beat the record. I've seen a few of those lately, records. Yes. Yes, of course, record. Hyundai A-League crown for this round at Aussie Stadium, Sydney and Adelaide. Now Jasper for New Zealand. Sizing up the story. Inside to Caravella. He's had a tough day out, Zenon Caravella. Forward by Musket. Saki's got a toe in. In front of Tinkler, he comes again. And they'll settle for the throw in. A very important touch there from Tinkler. Diaco. Across the box for Ante. Doubles back. He's got Emblem on his hammer. Musket. Dia Diaco. Musket's gone through. Kevin Musket! Glenn Moss in the last line. Keeps the Kiwis in the battle, but Melbourne coming again. Burns. He was sizing up for number seven of the season, Musket. And there's proof that Kevin Musket is looking for the Golden Boot Award. Beautiful little touch, a weighted pass. Diaco waits for the skipper to come back for the second, and he splits the two defenders, goes through cutely. The first touch with the right, the second, and the third one. Tries to scoop it, I think, but a lovely save. That's three in about three minutes from Glenn Moss. Frustration, why not? I want that Golden Boot trophy. <laughs> he now departed Archie Thompson and Bobby Despotowski locked on eight as we see a handball from Ricky Diaco. Look at that, five saves from the gloves of Glenn Moss. Nothing for Theoklatos. In the story of the match, the ball's hooked into a dangerous area for Melbourne. And scooped around. Sean Devine, it's a tough slog it's been for Sean Devine. In the shaky aisles. Well, you probably got to put that one down as his first save, the Oklatos. Diaco turns into a nice little bit of room. A little back heel there was looking for the run of Pantelides. Now Ferrante across the park. Story is wide. Into the feet of Diaco, who's been busy since his arrival at halftime. Story. Ferrante, Pantelides, now he'll go the other way, Rekia. Ball in from Rekia, Tembura's got the header. And a little ribbing from the Union for Noah Hickey. Well, they can't get out of their own half, the Kiwis, now the ball in. Allsop made the run, Moss got the fist, now Musket! Back he went, Glenn Moss. And it's like a two-horse war. Musket just can't get it past Moss. He wants that goal-scoring award. I'm convinced of it. Second opportunity in his many minutes from the skipper, Kevin Musket. Almost an inch-perfect lob volley there. And Glenn Moss, like a salmon. Brilliant skills. To come back onto your line after punching one clear just shows you the quick feet and the fitness. Needed it. In by Sarkis. Up they climb. Allsop was there. Close, but no cigar for Denny Allsop. Well, Kevin Musket scored two this season, but he could have had a hat-trick.
Yeah, some stack of players on that goal scoring list. Behind the front two, there's half a dozen players locked on seven. Heap on six as well, including Musket now. When I say he scored two, he scored two in a match. <laughs> yes. Now Diaco. Challenge from Darren Baisley. Here's Zenon Caravella. He's had a tough one out. What is interesting, he's the player that's won the most fouls in the season, Caravella. 56, so a busy player, creative player, who drags a lot of players into fouls, but it's Melbourne again, Story inside, looking for the ball in for Diaco. Just missed the man, and Emblem brings it away for New Zealand. Only as far as Pantelides, across to Ferrante. Look at the space for Recchia. Across the midfield, Pantelides, Musket. Now Simon Storey, who looks down on energy, but he got there. Sarkis. Diaco. A little bit of space. Diaco! Yeah, really dominating now, Melbourne. Not just through possession, but the weight of numbers getting forward. You can always be prepared to keep possession in better areas when you've got a 2-0 scoreline. Josh Maguire about to come on for New Zealand. And it's Noah Hickey coming off some fresh legs to try and give the visiting side, Alan Hunter, a little bit of spark. Yeah, not surprising as well. There's been a lot of work down the right-hand side from the victory, meaning Noah Hickey's probably run out of legs earlier than he'd have liked. And on the offensive, they'll need to try and get forward and link up a little more with the front two, the New Zealand Knights, if they're to get something back in this game. And they can do it. That's the thing about football. If you don't finish the game off and you sit at 2-0, we've seen it before from the New Zealand Knights. Here's Allsop. Got a toe in Allsop! And John Tamburis, right off the paint, has still kept it at two. Well, he could have injured himself as well on the follow-through. Desperate defending, and Daniel Allsop can shake his head because he's been in this one-on-one -on -one situation too many times this season and been unlucky. Definitely a lot of bravery there from Glenn Moss and Tamburis following up like great defenders should and almost ripping through the net on the follow-through. It's been a good battle. We saw a penalty earlier from those two. And he's done everything but score, Denny Alsop. Just three for the season. Of course, one of the leading shot takers in the A-League. In by Saki's a dangerous looking ball, but it swung into the arms of Glenn Moss. And here it is, Tamburis. Colliding into the back of the net, the side netting as well. It's almost like a fish in a net. <laughs> yeah. A big marlin <laughs> from across the Tasman. Melbourne will feel that they'll need that third and fourth before they can start the entertainment factor. We saw New Zealand earlier in the season sneak one back and earn a point at Suncorp against Queensland Raw. And sometimes football can be strange if you don't take your chances. Here they go again. They're pounding away on the New Zealand door. Allsop tried to find the run of Musket, but Caravella brings it away. Been quick to shut down New Zealand, but Sarkis has overstepped the mark there. Yeah, New Zealand start to as we see this foul on Caravella. Not a lot in it, but certainly the smaller player deserved it. They need to start keeping possession again. They've gone through a patch where they're just giving it away after one and two passes, Neil. Yes, Melbourne have been able to deal with just about everything as Tambura's got a foot in in front of Ferrante. Wants another goal for Ante after scoring the opener on the Central Coast last round. Now Frank Van Eyes. 
comes back inland. Baisley, who's wandered forward, he switches it across. Cut out by Burns. Tinkler. Poor pass, no chance. Brocky. Away comes Melbourne. Allsop. Diaco's running through the middle. Still Allsop. Advantage, surely. Not given by Angelo Nardi. He'll give the free kick, but surely he could have kept the whistle in his pocket. Yeah, definitely some good skill there coming inside Tamburis, and he has to be careful. He's sitting on a yellow card earlier in the match from the penalty, and it certainly would have been to the advantage of the home team. Referee had have just played on in that particular moment. A little too early with the whistle. Sarkis. Floating ball in. Emblen was up there. Away by Baisley. In comes Pantelides. Mark Burns is up there. Now Caravella can bring it away for New Zealand. And room for Jeremy Brocky. He's hardly had a chance to go on a gallop, Brocky, but takes a few yards, slips over, cost him a decent ball in. Musket on for Sarkis. The petrol gauge is low for New Zealand. Here's Allsop. Diaco's pulled away. He's looking for him. Little touch there by Van Nuys. Diaco looks up. Tries to get around him. Out comes Moss and it breaks down again. Yeah, just too many touches in the box from Diaco. He'll be aware of that. Needs to pull the trigger earlier. There's the option. He's... Goes right foot or left foot, right there. And there it is. That's the option when you need to pull the trigger or look for another option to lay the ball off. Once again, Glenn Moss, brilliant. Very brave at the feet. Seventeen shots to three, Melbourne's way. Such has been the domination. All the time in the opposition half, possession stats are... Getting up towards a two to one ratio. And to be fair, Neil, the three shots from New Zealand Knights have not been testing ones that the Oclatus has had to really work for. Yes, he did right, Michael Theoclatos. He could have been keeping in Gladrap for those shots. Also, Caravella. Getting a lot more touches in this half, Caravella. Here's Baisley. He's pushed up into midfield with Emblen in defence. Diaco. Ball off a musket. Sarkis. Back heel for Diaco. And a little deflection again. They'll go to the corner flag off Cole Tinkler. Yeah, clever play there from the two Melbourne Victory players in Diaco. And Saki's about to approach another corner. Ninth corner for Melbourne against two for New Zealand. Christian Saki's right into the heart. And lurking on the fringe again is Zenon Caravella. Rolls it up towards Devine, who can turn his man. Gives it back to Caravella. Now the new man, Maguire. Tinkler. Out for Brocky. Well, breaks down. Devine was not interested in the ball down the line. He's almost been a different player, Jeremy Brocky, tonight, Neil. We've seen him quite often just get the ball and run at players at will, and we haven't seen enough. The New Zealand Knights would like to see more of that from him this evening if they're to get back into this game quickly. Here is Devine. Was there a hand? I think there were two hands. <laughs> enough hands. <laughs> Frustration, that's a good sign of it when your team isn't sitting on the table in a comfortable position. The captain there from the home team, 2-0 up, he scored a goal, and some would say he could have scored three. And the newcomer, he's been instrumental. He needs to pull that trigger early if he's to get on the score sheet with his teammates. Diaco. Yes, 23 years of age, Diaco. He was the State League Player of the Year in Victoria last season before the launching of the victory. Here's Ferrante. 
Working in tight spaces, back to Musket. First time off for Allsop, who'd come back onside. Allsop! Took a little deflection, I thought, but no. Yeah, and a good shot there in the background from Glenn Moss. You can see him reprimanding his defence for not shutting down on this occasion. Daniel Allsop, Ferrante with the first opportunity, just flicks it inside. Musket, lovely again, good vision. And look at the time on the ball from Daniel Alsop. One, two, and the third one not on target. But because of the defensive duties not being tight enough, it's given them the opportunity again, the victory. And as we saw there, the ball out from the back straight to a Melbourne player. Now Sarkis, but offside, flag is up. And they're almost queuing up, aren't they, Neil? Melbourne victory for opportunities on target. Look at this, Pantolides just takes it off Baisley, inside for Diaco, was crashed into, play goes on Pantolides, across the top of the box, forced wide is Sarkis. Now Musket. So they double back and try again, Ferrante will switch it for Carl Reckier. So a good match at right back. Ball in isn't bad. Up goes Allsop over the top. And sloppy stuff from Tinkler. 11th corner coming up for Melbourne. Yeah, good opportunity again from Diaco. Possibly looking for the penalty rather than trying to look for something on target. They get in that dangerous situation. 2-0 up. You need to pull the trigger, Melbourne. He's had plenty of practice from the corner flag, Sarkis. This time near post! Well, there's another tuna or a marlin in the back of the net again, Neil. It's Glenn Moss. No doubt it was a foul, and he's asking the referee why not the first time. There's been a few dubious ones on the goalkeeper, but he's kept a clean sheet in the second half and done a very good job so far. Yes, he's been under the pump all right. You see it there trying to get across. Made of strong stuff, those nets, Neil. New Zealand keepers are made of strong stuff too, Alan. Now down by Story. Emlyn jumping with Diaco. Recovers quickest. Off for Sam Jasper. Down the park, Sean Devine, who's perhaps a metre offside. Yeah, well picked up. Good vision from the referee on that occasion. Late challenge coming in. He was offside, though, no mm. doubt about it. Well spotted, Neil. Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> We're waiting for that goal, much like the Melbourne fans, dare I say it. They're looking for that goal. They want to celebrate the end of the season with a big victory. So the long ball into the Melbourne box. Up goes Emblem. Back it comes Maguire. Who thought, well, I haven't been on the ground long. I'll try my luck from a mile out. By also Diaco, Ferrante running across the top with Sarkis. The flag was up. Now it falls for Brocky. Tinkler thought about the cross. Now he does. He's looking for Maguire all the way across the back. Takes it down, Maguire. Now Jasper in from the other side. Story sends it back where it came from. Musket. Now Story. Just didn't notice it also, but started to run forward. Wouldn't they love Richard Kicks Bickler out there now to come off the bench, Neil? 
Here's Diarco. He's having a real tussle out there with Emblem. Got a little chip over the top for Allsop, who was gliding across the top of the box. Pantelides. Now Pirikoski marches forward. Musket. Forward by Burns. Straight to Maguire. Plenty of ill-directed balls as Pantelides crashed into Maguire. Play goes on. Diaco. Does well, Ricky Diaco. Gets it across to Story. Story puts the foot down. Tries to come back on the right foot. Just too many white shirts around in the end. And now Brocky can break. Gets it back from Devine. Again, just the ball. Not good enough. Baisley. Baisley slips around Burns. Decent ball in. Back goes the Oklatos and makes it his. And there is the crowd topping 10,000, 10,078. A good last round crowd here at Olympic Park. Had wonderful attendances, plenty up around the 13, 14,000 mark. Of course, the record crowd against Sydney. And another tremendous show of footballing faith from the Melbourne public, Alan. Absolutely, as always. And I wouldn't mind suggesting that the weather, the beautiful Melbourne day, the sunshine here has kept a few more thousand away. They had predicted a bit more. Kevin Musket probably earned himself a drink deliberately there. Needs a rest. Might be thinking about the beach tomorrow if the result goes his way. Ernie Merrick still with some work to do. I'm sure he'd love his troops to get four or five here. They've been capable of it, Neil, haven't they, with the time in possession and certainly the shots on target and shots on goal. Kevin Musket recovers and will go to the sideline before returning, but... Saw Ernie Merrick up and about. What well, has been interesting, he's made a real habit of getting stuck into his players to keep it going from the bench in this one as Xiaobin Zhang looks to make his way on for New Zealand. And it's Cole Tinkler who will be replaced. Of course, Xiaobin Zhang got the goal against Adelaide. Ripped off the shirt and took a yellow card, but the goal he celebrated. Time ticking down on the Knights. Slipping into the 85th minute. Still Melbourne have it by two. As it was at half-time. Burns and Musket. Now on by Allsop, Diaco coming through, but out comes Moss. Now a touch for Zhang. 20 years of age, the young Chinese player. The ball was looking for Brocky, hooked away by Rekia. Now Allsop has got the right side of Temburis. And surely a nudge from the Kiwi defender. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a foul, an unnecessary foul, I've got to say, from Tamburis in that situation. Daniel Allsop not really going into a dangerous position. You're better off just holding the player there. Getting some troops back behind the ball. I've lost count of the number of times Sarkis has been over the dead ball from either the free kick or the corner. But he gets another shot at it here as... 
Melbourne away in falling sunshine. In by Sarkis. It's low! Across the front of the keeper. Denny Allsop made the run. Beautiful delivery, as we expected. Plenty of pace on it from Christian Sarkis. Just bent it quite near to that near post. And a lovely touch from both Tamburis in the end. What a save from Moss with his outstretched right hand this time, not his foot. Yes, a hand in there from Moss was vital in the end. But here we go again from the corner. Sarkis. Flat! Off the line by Caravella. And it will not go in for Daniel Alsop. Incredible, like a mind of its own. The football out there. Here's Story now for Melbourne. It was almost a, a replay. Same supplier, Saki, same delivery, same finish there. Here he is again, Allsop, trying to create that meter for the shot. Breaks down again. Neil Emblem away for New Zealand. He goes long across the park looking for Zhang. Story missed the header but got it straight back from the young Chinese player. Pirikoski, Pantelides. Ferrante. Wide for Sarkis. Controls it nicely. When you ready. Yeah, yeah. Musket. Inside goes Sarkis. Still going, Christian. Sarkis! He's thinking about the top corner, I'm sure, but just didn't get it off right. Now Jasper putting Van Ice under a bit of pressure, but the tempo of this second half now starting to take its toll. Here's Baisley cutting across, sends Xiaobin Zhang on a run. Good chance now for Ernie Merrick to make another replacement. Vince Lear will get the final few minutes. Place of Christian Sarkis. A good job done by Christian Sarkis. Again, it all hasn't come off Alan Hunter, but puts himself about. Yeah, it definitely has been one of his better games, but aided by a, a lack of discipline at times from the New Zealand defenders. Christian Sarkis, one of many who will probably wonder how he didn't score today. Reflection of play, Neil, that just sometimes you have to remind yourself it's only 2-0 because it's been such domination at times from Melbourne victory. Yes, it's been a familiar pattern here at Olympic Park especially. It does stay this way. They will have a goal difference of three and join Perth on 26 who also have a goal difference of three, but the Glory have scored more goals. But can Melbourne do something about it? Diarco. We can get the purchase on the ball through away by Tim Burris. And they're sitting on 26 for the season from 21 rounds. And therein lies the story of the, the missed opportunity of the Melbourne victory. Yeah, definitely. You just wonder, we spoke about it earlier with Kits Bickler and Archie Thompson, what sort of damage they could have done today if they were given the opportunity. The late opportunity here also for Chris Bright as the veteran. Sean Devine makes his way off Olympic Park for the last time this season. New Zealand pull something out of the bag. The ball in towards Bright. Away by Burns has been rock solid at the back in this match. Pantelides. Player who's given away plenty of fouls this season, Steve Pantelides, but I'm sure he'll tell you it's part of his makeup. He provides. Some of the mongrel in this Melbourne midfield. He's had a good match. Three minutes of stoppage time as the ball's rolled in. Now Diaco picks it up. Diaco! And Glenn Moss again comes up trumps. 
Diaco looks skyward. But quite often the ball is a decent strike, but as Moss goes down, he spreads himself always. Gives himself a fleeting chance. Even when the players are rushing right down on him, it's been a stern effort from Glenn Moss as Baisley goes across. Out by Reckia. Almost one minute up of three added minutes as Allsop tries to get in behind Tamburis. What a battle they've had, those two. And another change as Ernie Merrick uses up all the troops. Ramazan Tapsen Tioglu will come on, normally a defender. He'll come on for another job well done from Kevin Musket. Got his sixth goal of the season from the penalty spot, the skipper. And 21-year-old Tapsen Tioglu gets the final few minutes here at Olympic Park. He gets an early touch. Can they grab a third? Fourteen shots on target to the Kiwis one. Tells its own story. Overall shots is a whopping 22 to 4. Now Pirikoski jumping, but... Chris Bright picks it up. Here's Brocky for New Zealand. And a great finish from Brocky, who's hardly been in the match, but he got through the channel, measured the shot, and cracked it past the Oflatos. Good little ball from Bright. No one picked up Brocky. And he had time to look up. And that left foot has produced some great goals for the Kiwis this season. Might be a scoreline that flatters the Knights as we take another look at the finish. 2-1, but again, Melbourne have failed to put the opposition away. Time just about up. Now Tafsensioglu goes on a charge. Down the ground by Moss. Only seconds left. And there are those seconds. Applause rings around Olympic Park. Melbourne have finished with a win. Kevin Musket got a goal. So too did Mark Burns. And it's the result that the fans wanted. Final score here at Olympic Park. Round 21. The Melbourne victory 2. The New Zealand Knights 1. Drags the victory up on a 26 points. One of the scorers, the skipper, Kevin Musket, who is now with Alan Hunter. Kevin, obviously a fantastic opportunity for you to get in the goal scoring charts again. And not the greatest finish at the end of the match, but certainly good to see the support here again. Yeah, once again, I think uh, over the season, the results haven't been the best for us and obviously reflects uh, where, we, where we ended up on the table. But uh, it's a testament to people who have turned up again today. You know, we must be doing something right for you know, 14 and a half, 15,000 to turn up week in, week out. Richard Kitzbickler mentioned that uh, he was disappointed because you looked to be trying to score more goals than him and he's going back to Austria tomorrow. What have you got to say about that? Yeah, we're going to miss the little fella. He's, uh, he's been brilliant for us and uh, obviously wish him well on behalf of all the lads. Uh, wish him well in uh, what he does. He's had an offer that he couldn't refuse and uh, good luck to him. You're obviously enjoying the role now in midfield. How do you see next season? I know it's early days, but some, some improvement needed. Yeah, obviously. I mean, uh, everything's, uh, everything's judged at the end of the season. And, uh, you know, obviously the coaching staff have been doing that in the last few weeks, maybe not months. Um, and I presume there'll be a, a few changes. Uh, we obviously need to strengthen in a few areas. You got the three points, Kev. Good goal. Good to see you again. Look forward to it next year. Cheers, big fella. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. It's a pretty happy Kevin Musket. Let's have a look at the goals now from this battle, the last one of the season at Olympic Park. 
And of course they got underway from the corner. Watch Burns up at the back. Jasper off the back post. Burns made it count. He threaded the needle to put Melbourne in front. And they dominated. Well, they dominated right from the off Melbourne. And they got a bit of help, you would suggest, here from Angelo Nardi. They went to the spot off that challenge. Tamburis on Allsop. And Musket went bang for his sixth of the season. Five from the spot. And 2-0 at the break. It stayed that way for a long time. But Jeremy Brocky got a rare chance late for the Knights. And he buried it. And it finished 2-1. Coming up, stay with us. Plenty more to come from Suncorp. The roar at home to the charging Central Coast Mariners. Live 8pm Eastern from Fox Sports 1. Stick around for that one. That should be a beauty up there at Suncorp. Well, Melbourne victory. It might have been the season that was, but that's it from us. They win it 2-1 on behalf of all the crew. I'm Neil Evans. It's goodbye from Olympic Park.